You're looking at Unrendered on IKTV. My guest is the veteran, Joseph Reds Pereira. Red, so you're talking about your stammering and, and your difficulties to pick up girls at parties anyway. <laughs> Well, no, ask them to dance. Uh, pick up, no, 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 no. Nobody picked up anybody in them okay. days. It's the wrong you might have language. a little crush. I see. You might hear so and so like you. Yes, yes. So let's just get that right. But um, how then did you make that transition into giving commentary? Uh, how did you overcome this, this obstacle? Well, it took some time. Mm. I never really got down to why I stammered until about 1967 mm -hmm. when I went to Denmark and uh, spent a year all by myself, knowing no one. Mm -hmm. But by 59, 60, I started to do my first broadcast for the Rediffusion Group. There was two matches in British Guyana. Jamaica played Barbados at Border with the Cammy Smith and Conrad Hunt facing Gilchrist. Right. And the secondary game was British Guyana versus Trinidad and Tobago. They were played, in those days it was the intercolonial series. Mm -hmm. It was always played in, in Guyana. The weather was good. And that was played in Burbis in eastern Guyana. And I was one given an opportunity after a, a bit of a trial with a big Grundic tape mm -hmm. recorder right. to go up and do the secondary game. Derek Murray's first um, regional game, his second first class game, I think. Charlie Davis's first game, he got mm -hmm. 100. Mm -hmm. And that's how I started. But then I went to England in 62, and I spent five years, knocked around the BBC, saw the, the 63 West Indies tour. You know, I, I lost a job because of, of, of leaving on the weekend. They mm -hmm. wanted overtime. I said, look, I'm going to Lords. Yes. I saw Hall and Butcher, you know, perform above and beyond the call, um, and I simply, you know, took an interest in football. I ran a basketball team. Mm -hmm. I was p sports convener for the West Indies Student Centre. Ran a team in the winter. Now that is, that is not easy. That's not because they got some winter mornings. So it's oh, yes. impossible to play. Um, so I. Still stammered, but I kept going. I kept picking up the knowledge, I picking up the experience, you know, meeting people. I, I yes. ran into Muhammad Ali at the steel band dance, Dixieland steel band from Trinidad. Wow. You know? mm -hmm. And you know, I, just talking to him, I said, how this fight is going to go? And he said, it's like if I turn the switch, he's a talking jive and he is going to go in five. <laughs> that was Henry Cooper. <laughs> and I said, what you're doing here? He said, yeah. well, the guys at the gyms talk, but this fan music, and I really came, spent a half an hour, him and the entourage, right? and I kept meeting uh, a lot of people. I worked for very little, if you had made 14 pounds in England, yes. but I made sure I saw Sammy Davis Jr., Ella Fitzgerald, Oscar yes. Peterson, yes, you know, are. a number of other personalities. Yeah. So five good years, ended up in Denmark, and in Denmark, I had a dishwashing job. Well, you don't wash it with hands, of course. You, you pack yeah, up everything yeah, in a machine, yeah. you press it, you check it, mm. and then you don't work for four hours. And I realized that there are certain things I could say. Rodriguez, Richards, mm. Richardson, you know, Schillingford. Yeah. And it was, the, it was the R or it was the S. And if I could maybe overcome the initial... Richardson, the initial Richards, yeah. and rehearsed that and store the confidence. Do it, store the confidence. Have the confidence to be able to say it over and over again. Mm. And that is how, without a speech service, <laughs> I managed to get over the stammering. Of course, as we go into this interview, we're going to talk about some of the other obstacles that you've overcome all by yourself. Um, but let's just talk a bit now about the authoring of this book, Living My Dreams. You've, you've published a book. It's basically about reds and things that you've always dreamt about doing. Um, but it's also a recapping 
of some of your significant life experiences? Well, I've always told people I've lived my dreams. I, I yes. you know, you dream, and you know, I've actually lived it. You know, I'm lucky, very lucky. And I need to say from the outside, Tony, from the outset, that those dreams was because people gave me an opportunity yes. or opportunities. You may have opportunities, but you might blow it. I did try to take advantage of each opportunity. One of the hurdles I had to get over, let me also say, that stammering affected my education because in... In a class in those days, in the yes. fifth days, if you stammered, you were the laughing stock. And if the teacher managed to say, um, Pereira, um, give me the answer for whatever, or tell me, a, yes. you freeze. You have it, you can say it. You might be able to write it. You cannot, you cannot express, express it. it verbally. Yes. And it affected my education and at the age of 16. Yours truly was working at the British guy in a credit corporation. Yes. As I missed the all rounder. Yes. So, so you really didn't go through no, formal uh, schooling? No. Formal schooling to any degree. Yeah. Yes. I had to really, my education was a kind of a worldwide education listening, yes. reading, talking, meeting people, yes. you know, following world events and things like that. And, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm very lucky. I'm very lucky and I thank all the many, many people who have given me an opportunity. What gave you the idea to write this book? Well, Tony, I never thought I would ever write a book. Mm. When I became 70, and you, you've alluded to my age, <laughs> I'm 73. Right. Um, when I became 70, um, a Trinidadian architect called Claude Guillaume, who was involved in the St. Kitts Cricket Ground. I know Claude. Right. Yes. The, um, yes. Yes. The St. Lucia Grong yes. and the, the Guyana Grong and Providence. He always kept saying to me for about two years, boy, you have a story to tell about you, Trini. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Boy, you got a story to tell. You want to start yet, boy? And he kept, you know, saying that to me. I, I meet him socially. He said, that book, boy, you start. And then there's another fellow called Ian MacDonald, who's Trinidadian, but mm -hmm. lived in Guyana. Okay. Loved Canai. Loved Border. He was in Sugar. He's a poet, uh, um, writ written well, um, famous writer. And he also, in a different way, a very English, uh, he went to school in England. And he said, Red, you haven't started that book yet. Mm. Yeah, Red, you, you really must get. So when I became 70, I got a part of one day, and I said, you know, I, I, need, I need to try and, and, and see if I can put anything together. And I wrote 1945, because that's the year that the war ended, the same day the war ended, where the Allies conquered Hitler, yes. we came from the Pomeroon to the city. That very day. Yeah, that very day, right? Mm. That very day. And of course, in those days, there were shortages left, right, and center. Right. The, German, the Germans were, were you know, yeah, just about withdrawing, yes. fleeing. Yeah. Um, and uh, luckily in the Pomeroon, we have... We had a you're, you're self sufficient, yeah, sufficient, but in Georgetown there was there yes. was f flour shortage, exactly. riots over flour. Yeah. You know, yeah. salt fish was was a big thing, right? Um, and I started going to primary school, St. Mary's R.C. You know, step by step, I remembered my first job because of the circumstances, mm -hmm. um, and and the things I, I began doing networking to make a football team by getting balls and networking to get a couple of bats mm. and balls for cricket, you know. And, um, you know, it, I didn't know then, but I, I had, in fact, started the whole networking um, program that I used later on in my life, you yes. know. Being able to communicate to people, um, to knock on doors, to approach people. You know, time management. You know, I, I had a time management program yes. and didn't know, Tony, I was into time management. Yes. But if you wanted to get anything done, you had to start early. You know, if you wanted to go and get that pitch prepared, to get that drum hired, to get 11 men to turn up, you had to start telling men early, yes. you know. Yes. Yeah. What have you noticed several things about this, this book? I mean, you, you talk, and I'm going to ask you just now, what 
In fact, what are your dreams? You know, because we talk about living your dreams. But why don't you notice several things about the book in recounting your experiences and events that you know occurred? Um, it's not a morning groaning book. It's it's one that's on the positive side. It's things that you enjoyed immensely, um, and th that speaks, I think, to your character because some people can can write about life. And you can write about life. Yes, you highlight the hardships and so on. But you can write it in a sort of blame game fashion. Yeah. You know, you, 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 you're blaming people for your circumstances. On the other hand, you've illustrated through your network of experiences how you've managed to, in fact, live your dreams. So that speaks to your, your positive character. Have you always been that way, Reds? Have you always been, from a child, a, a positive thinker? Yes, I think basically I was very outgoing. Mm -hmm. I was an extrovert, uh, you know, but I, you know, I wasn't, you know, um, beyond that. Uh, but I would go up and talk to people, and I would make friends very easily. Mm -hmm. I was very much known in in Charleston, where, where we grew up, you know. Yes. Um, um, always being very positive, always making friends, maybe making too many friends for my mother right. and father, you know, right, right. because I, I have a lot of boys dropping in and things like that. Um, yeah, I think the, the book really um, carries the message of being positive, of so getting yes. things done, of, yes. of moving on. Yeah. But Tony, I mean, you know, everybody will have disappointments in life. I mean, in 19, um, 19 when it was... Um, 71, I did my first test match mm. uh, at, at Borda. Yes. This is the Indian series with, with Venkat and Prasanna and Betty. And I was told, get my passport. You'll go to the Jamaica test match and they heard you and they like you. Well, there were a lot of us around. Mm -hmm. And a colleague of mine, Tony Williams, he got the spot. I was disappointed, but, yes. you know. But you, you moved on. Moved on. You figured that, you know, there are a couple of people, he got the spot. Yes. Moved on. It didn't. It didn't cause a problem with myself and Tony. I, I'm sorry. It wasn't at Savannah Park. I listened. Lance Gibbs was left out of that. I went to his house, sat in the yard with the radio right. myself and Lance so Gibbs. Two disappointed people, but you still yeah, he was, had a huge interest in Jack the game. Jack Dorigo got in. Yes, he still <laughs> had a huge interest. Red, we, we, we're at the end of the section, so let's just take a pause and come back. Sure. You're looking at Unrendered, and my guest is Joseph Redsper. More when we come back.